Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 58 here at camp. I can't believe it. If you haven't noticed, we are using new microphones. We're testing something out. So if anything sounds a little different, a little strange, we're we're going through the growing pains here at camp. I'm wondering if this will like pick up my gargling stomach because I am hungry. I had four pieces of deli ham with mustard downstairs before we started to record. Because if you know me, you know I really enjoy a deli meat. And a, a honey ham is my preferred deli meat for sure. These mics are so good. You can hear the cold cuts just being digested right there in your tum tum. In the stomach acid? <laughs> yeah. You're sick for that. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, we don't want to hear it about the mic stands, okay? We hate it. We know we're, we're working on it, okay? We're a work in progress as we all are, Ex okay? Exactly. So what are we talking about today? We just got back. From Memphis. Walking in Memphis. In Memphis. Walking with my feet 10 feet off a of bill. If you know this, you guys, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of call outs in the story to things we've previously talked about, starting with Walking in Memphis, one of my favorite songs by Cher, a song I've already put on the Camp Songs playlist. Yeah, a cover that's better than the Ridge. I got to Walk in Memphis. You did, 10 feet off a of Beal. I did not purchase any blue suede shoes, though. I know, I did think about that. I was like, maybe I'll literally Photoshop my shoes blue. It was a tremendous, fun trip. There's a lot to talk about. But what I will start the story off by saying, you're not going to believe the hotel we stayed in. Guys? Oh, I should have went back and looked at what episode it was. Well, so one of the campers will know, and they'll let people know in the comments below. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and say it since it was your story? Yeah, so do you guys remember, I would say maybe three, four months ago? Sure. It wasn't too long ago, but it was in like a couple months ago. I told a story in the podcast um, for like my weekly news update that there is this hotel in Memphis called the Peabody Hotel that has live ducks that live in this fountain in the hotel. Like yeah. long story short, these ducks come down like between 11 and five, they swim in their little fountain, they go upstairs, they have their own private handler and they live in a penthouse for six months and they swap them out with like new ducks. And it's been going on for like almost a hundred years. Well, we stayed in the Memphis Peabody Hotel, and I got to see the ducks firsthand. It was really full circle for the podcast. It really was, because we didn't get to pick it. Like, this was, we were put up in the hotel, and it happened to be the Peabody, yeah. which we do know is called the Peabody. Well, if you're from Massachusetts, you can defend me by saying, I, I would call it the Peabody Hotel. I thought you were just being silly, because I would call it the Peabody. Yeah, no, it definitely is supposed to be the Peabody, but growing up in Mass, I would say Peabody. Oh, okay. Well, let me, let me pull back the curtain a little bit on this process. So, so it is probably one of the biggest tourist attractions of Memphis. It's like behind Graceland where Elvis lived. It's the Peabody Hotel Duck Extraordinaire show because the entire lobby at 11 a.m. when these ducks are there, like it is full. There's a mezzanine level of the lobby. It's like yeah. a two-story lobby. People are on the rails there. They have kids lined up. I would say there's probably 400 people there every single day at 11 and 5. And also, I don't know if you noticed this, because we were staying there. We went outside one day around 1030, and like tour buses were showing up, dropping off hundreds of people just to stay in like the hotel lobby for an hour to watch these ducks. Yeah, and they're like, the people weren't even staying there. They're like, we wanna see the ducks, we wanna see the ducks, which is so crazy because think about how many times you walk in a park past a, a pond full of 20 to 50 wild ducks living their lives. It's Do true. we care? No, no but you put them in a hotel lobby and my God, we flock like, we flock like ducks. I do appreciate that the handler was wearing a red suit. It felt very expensive, very Disney, very fun. But when we got to see the ducks, it was so busy. And you know, guys, you guys know me. I'm a short king. I'm only 5'9". And there was these big burly men standing up. And I'm like, how is a man in an, a leather jacket riding a motorcycle interested in this? This is not for men. Yeah. This is for gay men, mm -hmm. women, and children to mm -hmm. watch these ducks. All these grown men go outside, smoke a cigarette, 
this is not for you. I can't see. I'm too petite. You couldn't even see when they came down. No, I couldn't. And and you were recording. So I was looking up at Jonathan's phone screen to see what was happening. Um, it was cool. I wanted to be one of those fancy people that got chosen to be like the duck maitre d'. They had like honorary like duck king and queen. Yeah. What's the requirements? What do you have to do to do that? I should have just asked the person checking it and being like, hey, like I'll sip you a 50. Yeah. Walk that fucking duck. I could walk that fucking duck all day long. The kids got to sit in front and I'm like, they're young. They have a whole life ahead of them. I don't know how much longer I have to live. I want to see the dogs. Surprisingly, not a turd on the floor. I didn't see any poop. They were quick to clean it up if there was any. And it didn't smell. It, they're professional ducks, baby. These are working ducks. They could even be sad. I'm not even sure. And we went upstairs and saw their little penthouse that they live in year-round. And I couldn't believe it. We were seeing it in the flash. We could see it from our hotel room on the 11th floor, which is allegedly haunted. Well, guys, this was the story we told four months ago. And we got to live it out, like, just by chance. Like, so random. Truly full circle. What else did you want to talk about from our Memphis trip? Well, we escaped to the beauty shop, restaurant, and lounge. What, what, what was that? Tell the campers. So we thought that it was where Priscilla Presley had, like, opened the shop, but uh-huh. it wasn't. She was a regular there, but she did go and get her hair cut there. It opened, oh God, back in the, I want to say 40s maybe. Yeah, it was a cut and dye salon, guys. Think very 50s, 60s, like, okay, have you ever seen Hairspray? Picture that, babe, okay? But real life. Yeah, I, and I actually found a picture of the inside of the salon in the um, in the 50s. And they have the original hair dryer chairs that you sit in and you eat. It's like a restaurant now. Yeah, it was really cool. So we got there and we went to go like sit at our table. And I was I didn't think we were going to get one of the cool tables. Because yeah. there's only like four of them. Mm. And, and the rest of, are like normie tables. They're normie tables. And we're like, whatever. And as long as we get put in the back room near the cool tables and I can look at them, I'll feel special. So... She starts heading right to the back room. I'm like, thank God. We're going to at least see the tables that were the cool chairs. And then she sits us at one. It was so cool. I am a martyr. So Jonathan got to sit in the cool chair. And I am blessed to have a wonderful boyfriend who let me sit in the chair. So thank you. No, I'm not looking for thank you. I'm just looking to acknowledge what happened. Because there's always one person in a relationship who has to let the other person live their dream. Yeah. But I will say it was enjoyable to be the person looking at it the entire time. Yeah, because honestly, like I was experiencing it from sitting, but I couldn't see anything. So I'm really just looking at a wall with like normie tables. And I'm looking at you sitting in the cool chair surrounded by these giant glass ceramic bricks bricks so it's almost like i'm the martyr then well this is me looking for my thank you i'm looking for us both to be happy (laughs) with the choice that we got i thought it was fun and the woman who opened it her name is um karen carrier and she used to be a personal chef for tom cruise and susan sarandon Oh, I thought you were going to say um, Suzanne Summers, who just passed. No, may she rest in peace, though. Did you know Suzanne Summers was the woman who, okay, so she wrote like 15 um, like self-help books, which I've definitely seen them. Like, I've definitely seen her face on a book before. But she also invented the thigh master. Oh. That was like, well, I don't know if she invented it, but she was like the face of the thigh master. Oh, wow. That like was everywhere in the 90s. God, that really works your thighs. I'm like thinking about it now. I should honestly, we should get one. Well, Susan Summers, rest in peace. We love you. But Susan Sarandon also yes. love that crazy little redhead. Come on, Louise. She's a fantastic actress. I love her in Bad Moms to the Christmas Spectacular. I was just gonna freaking say that. Her character where she plays, I think she plays Mila Kunis' mother in it. Yeah. And she's like on the road getting like hitchhiking from tractor trailer truck drivers. And she shows up and she's like, Mila's like, you came for Christmas. And she's like, what? Oh, yeah, I did. (laughs) That was her comedic timing in that was so funny. funny. No, she wasn't Mila Kunis, so she was the other woman. I forget what her name was, but... um... Oh, you're right. It yeah. wasn't Mila Kunis because Mila Kunis was um, Martha May Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's what's her name? It was um Khan, Heather Khan. No, I can't. She's one of those people that like I hear her name, I'm like yes, and I see her face, and I'm like oh, of course she's in this. I she was know. Cecile's mom in Cruel Intentions. My God, someone out there is literally screaming it into the ether. I'm sorry, we cannot hear you, babe. This is a one way s- combo. I can see her face, and she's honestly uh, that woman that we can't think of her name. She's probably the funniest character in Bad Moms because yeah. she's like the massage therapist. Yeah. If like anytime I think of doing a like a character that's a little chaotic, I instantly put her in the massage therapy world. It's so chaotic to me. I think I have such a, an averse fear to being like rubbed by a stranger. I've talked about this on the show before. So I instantly think like, oh, who would do this? Someone that lives in pure chaos. 
a la massage therapy. And there's this one school that was near where I grew up. It was called the Salter School. And they would do these like weird trades that were like, you'd get like a program in. And one of them was always massage therapy. So I always think like, okay, I went to the Salter School and I did massage therapy. And it just puts me in a space where I'm like, I'm going to say the most unhinged things that I didn't even know could come out of me. Much like her character. That's interesting because I know one person in massage therapy. It's my cousin Julie and she's very normal and quiet. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You can't you can't count out Julie. Uh what else did we see? Um we went to Graceland. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, what is it, oh. should we talk about Graceland? Let's talk about Graceland. If you don't know what it is, this was Elvis Presley's estate. This was like his famous house that he had like his entire career. He died there, unfortunately. And it's now not only a museum that you can visit, there's also like his private jets that you can go on. They have like these giant like warehouses of his costumes and all of his stuff from his entire life. My biggest takeaway that I think is so interesting about Graceland, first of all, definitely worth seeing. I think probably yeah. the coolest thing in Graceland above, like in my opinion, above Beale Street, above a lot of these other like things you can see related to like the music industry, his house is just so cool to me. It was wild to walk uh, in there. I do think it's weird how much stuff that they save because if you were to start a museum on my life right now, like I am constantly throwing out things that I do not want anymore. They had his like, they had his discount card from a childhood for like, Oh, to get discounted movie tickets. In yeah. the frame. They yeah. had his, they had his wallet. His mom was just holding on to everything. Cause she had everything from his childhood. Yeah. And he didn't guys, he didn't grow up. He grew up really poor. I'm sure if many of you have seen the movie or like know his life, like, so where were they storing all this in the little shotgun house? Yeah. I don't know. It was giving shanty. Speaking of shotgun, they had literal, they were like, oh, we scoured the floor for the shotgun shells that he used um, when it was it called rehearsing. And he's shooting when you practice range. with your gun. Clearly, I'm gay. Rehearsing with a shotgun. Yeah, where he, well, yeah, where he goes for his dress rehearsal with the <laughs> rifle. Yeah. They're like a fucking driving range. But they have oh, no, not a driving range. No. A shooting range. <laughs> oh my God. God. God help us all. So gay on this podcast. I just Jesus love that. We're, we're hands free for the first time in 58 episodes. I don't know what to do with my hands, guys. I'm literally like clapping. I'm waving with both hands right now at the camera because I'm just so overwhelmed to have. <laughs> both of my phalanges available uh but so back to the house when we get there what i didn't know what to expect i thought we were just going to pull up to the house the gates of graceland and we were just going to like walk, you walk in and it's whatever <laughs> but you get to like a little outlet shopping center thing that's kind of what it really reminded me of like a little downtown area it's reminding me of what are the malls that you go to that aren't malls but they're like discounted j crews an outlet and at it's literally simply an outlet. It's simply an outlet. So yeah. Graceland starts off simply at an outlet. Right. And I'm looking around. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh my God, is his house inside of the building? I thought the entire outlet was a wall with the house inside of it. Oh, right? but boy, were we wrong. No. So you get there. The entire thing is outfitted for Christmas already, which boo. boo I'm sorry. Christmas can, there could not be full Christmas decorations up before Halloween. Some people think not before Thanksgiving. I don't agree with that. I think it's the most magical time of year. I think November 1st, if it's your jam, it's your jam, go for it. Yeah. But before Halloween, it's distasteful. Well, you know what else? They also have to take into consideration the people who are traveling from near and far, north, south, east, and west, never eat soggy worms, who are trying to see it at Christmas because it's so iconic. So I think they're just trying to like spread it out for like as much as they can. But it's like, I bet they do it for four months. They've got to dig into January and keep up the Christmas decoration. So that's like almost half a year. I don't think Christmas when I think Graceland. I just think Elvis. No, I don't either. But look at some of the paintings that we saw that were there. Some of it were like snowy, woey, and like Christmas. So there's two paintings in the house of the Christmas house. And now we got to put the entire thing up in October. I don't know. I don't get it. So we're going to continue on. You get your tickets. First of all, the, the physical ticket itself is, Slag. it's kind of a slight, like you could almost frame the ticket they give you because it's really pretty. And then they make you watch a seven minute movie, which I just like love to watch a movie before going into an exhibit. Anywhere mm -hmm. museum wise, I'm like, wait, give me the visuals. Give me a taste of the culture and the fun and the whimsy. Then set me off my way. It reminds you of the hype. Like, as I got there, like, of course, I'm excited because it's Elvis's house. But I'm like, and we've seen the movie. We watched it last year. But, you know, you watch that seven minutes and you're like, oh, my God, how many shows did he do? Like 627 Vegas shows? No, he did 1,100 Vegas shows. No. Yes, he did 1,100. It's the only thing I remember from the movie. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um. Did you guys see the Elvis movie? Let's talk about <sighs> thoughts on that before we get into the house. The movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We talked about it last year. Remember? Well, that was one of my favorite episodes when we were literally, like, sick. 
Oh, that was the episode we did. <laughs> yeah, on? and we were on many pharmaceuticals. I think Tom Hanks was so bad in that movie. I really do. It made me uncomfortable. It wasn't his best work. I just felt like he was unnecessary. I thought, what's his name? Toby Maguire? That's not his name. No, he played Elvis. Austin Butler. Aust- Toby Maguire and Austin Butler are like the same name, just in different fonts. Oh my God, you're so right. So Austin Butler really did a great job. I always think of that scene of him like really sweaty and fat on stage, like in poor health. Yeah. I have it as a reaction folder yeah. for like text messages. But then when we saw the seven minute video, I he was a very sweaty man. He was. So and with I. all those lights and he was moving that pelvis around, it's taken a lot of work. It's a lot of calories burned. Yeah. I like the Elvis movie. And we were talking about how this probably like heightened the attraction of going to Graceland. Yeah. Definitely fun. I think it's two hours from Nashville. Anyways, back to the, the actual resort of Graceland. We get out of the movie. Yeah. And they instantly put us onto a shuttle mm-hmm. to the Graceland. So Graceland isn't at the museum it was literally behind us the it's, whole time it's across the street mm, he's right behind me isn't he the only way to get to grace is on these little shuttle buses so they they bring you down this little pathway you pass this jet and then you cross the street through the gates of Graceland. Yeah. Which is the song, guys. You guys obviously know. And it was beautiful the estate is gorgeous a lot smaller than i thought it would be but they weren't as gaudy and like crazy back then like you know kim k's house is like triple the size yeah it was it seemed modest but they also didn't let us see a lot of it but it was gorgeous from the outside and security out the wazoo obviously it's elvis's house and i understand that but they literally were like pulling people who were taking videos inside they're like we invite you to take photos but not videos and they were like six people Within like earshot of you at all times, which is, hey, that's great. Uh And the maintenance on the house, it looked fantastic, I got to say. It's so funny because I think the idea of not letting people record video in the museum is so antiquated because I can think of the breakers, which are like those like 1920s museums that are in Newport, Rhode Island that I grew up in. And in high school, you can't take videos, but now they let you because I think this fear of like, oh, they they see it on video, they're not going to come. It's like, no, if you let people make a TikTok at Graceland, like recording the inside of it, people are going to want to come see it for in real life. I think not letting people take videos is not the move. I think it's just like an old way of thinking. I agree. You were taking videos though. I want you to be honest. I took uh, one video by mistake on that, purpose. Okay. And it was of a really spooky, creepy monkey that was in the basement. The house is really cool. That's- the house is really, it's like a 1970s like porn star mansion. And I also just want to say that like, at least in my head, like, I feel like people are very respectful in there because there's so many shit that you can, like, touch. Like, I could sit at the bar stool if I wanted to. It wasn't even blocked off. But it said, like, do not touch, do not sit. And it was in, like, pristine condition. I thought about it. I didn't do it, though. I think people have sat on those bar stools because they are they are available. Like, yeah. it, they say don't sit, but it's, like, so open that you could if you wanted to. And they're probably not a ridge. I touched. They had this one room that had, like, curtains on the walls and the ceilings. I know that sounds crazy. The entire room was curtained, like in this like a ribbon style, and I did touch the wall. I had to. I had to. It looks like a magazine. I thought it was so cool. I like the jungle room. That was really cool. Yeah. Apparently in the 70s, Polynesian flair was a real design aesthetic. And I thought it was really fun. I love their sauce. What else did you like about his house? Um, I liked what did I like? Oh, we went to the jets. I loved the private jet. The private jet was absolutely insane. It wasn't even a jet. It was a plane. I know. There was one wasted room, I thought, in my opinion. The boardroom area. Do we really need a boardroom on a plane? Like, why can't we just sit on the couch with our laptops? <laughs> Good question. Good question. Even if you have a notepad, like, do you really need to be at a table sprawled out? Like, get comfy, get in a cozy recliner. And let's get to work. And there was also only one bed that was for the king himself. And wow. I'm like, where is everyone else? Where's everybody else, Diane? The jet, the jet fits 28 people. It's that big. There's one bed. So we were joking on the plane. We're like, how funny is it that Elvis is like, thank you very much. I'm going to bed. And then everybody else is like grabbing a pillow and like covering their body with it. Cause like <laughs> they weren't given any blankets or pillows. Yeah. It's like, fuck the rest of these people. Right. But it's like, if you're in a private jet, like, I don't know, have a drink, relax. You're on a jet. Yeah. I thought it was cool. It was very, very fun. Yeah. I thought Grayson was so worth the hype. Like the trip that we were on, they paid for it. Thank God we didn't have to pay for it. Yeah. Our ticket was like $80, I believe. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, it's definitely worth the stop if you've ever been interested in the king of 
rock and roll. I don't mm-hmm. know what is his title. He's just the king. I like Elvis. I like Elvis. I too. think I like Elvis. I think he'd be canceled nowadays. I think marrying um, a fourteen year old. It's a, it's. I'm excited for the Priscilla movie too. We. I am so excited to hear Priscilla's story. Can you tell everybody? what your first Instagram post was? My first Instagram post, and I'll scroll all the way back and I'll take a screenshot, and it was a picture of Priscilla Presley, and it said, girls these days need to take notes, or something like that. It's like, take notes on a classy gal, America. I like that your introduction to a new social media app was just, I'm gonna come out the gates so rude. Yeah. Like, what did everybody do to you so far? And you're like, I'm gonna start off by setting the tone, saying, Pull it together, bitches. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it was. It just I, felt, I saw a picture of her and I was so inspired because she's iconic. I know it's so funny. You know nothing about her, but this one photo that you like because you're gay and she's got a beehive and good eye, eye makeup, and you're like, this is the this is the beauty standard. Girls, take notes. What can I say? That is so pretentious homosexual. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, it was. Um, anything else about the house? No, I think it's great. I don't want to talk too much about it because it's literally a museum and these people can go if they want to. Yeah. So why were we? In Memphis, Tennessee. Jonathan, do you want to let the campers know what we were doing there? Yeah. So St. Jude Children's Research Hospital actually reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to go and participate in their country cares program. Um, I wasn't really sure why I was selected at first. And I was a little confused. I was on like full transparency. I didn't know like what I was going to do when I got there. Um, it ended up being like their their country cares. They raise a bunch of money through country music and country music artists. Who do we see? The brothers. Um, Brother Osborne. One of them is yeah. gay and he's actually kind of hot. Yeah. Sorry. I I'm like, that. wait, not mean to Brother Osborne now. I know, Come my through, God. Brother Osborne. That rainbow flag. So I went and I toured the campus and I got to like hear stories from all these families. It was a lot of seminars and just really learning about the hospital and I'm so impressed. And my earliest actual Actually, why I said yes was my earliest mem- my earliest charitable memory was actually for St. Jude when I was a kid. They were doing a toy drive and my dad took me to Toys R Us and we got some toys to donate to the kids. I don't remember what I saw. Probably a commercial of some sort. I feel like everybody does. But I feel like I was kind of ignorant to... I thought there was like St. Jude Children's Research Hospitals like here and there across the country and that there was like a program that hospitals do. But that's not the case. There's literally one. And it's in Memphis. Yeah, like one giant hospital that is like, you don't get a bill, which I was really impressed by. And that's the other thing is that families do not receive a bill from St. Jude. It's all completely paid for. And some of these kids are getting practically like death sentences. And they're coming from all over the world to, you know, have hope that St. Jude can pull through and and something will come of it. Yeah, it was very emotional weekend. A lot of really like hard stories to listen to, but a lot of amazing endings. And I think hearing from the families was really inspiring and awesome. And I think what they do is awesome. So I was I was happy that you got to go and I got to go with you. And we got to learn about an amazing program that's saving so many lives and doing so much research for children's cancer, which is like right. this, like the most unfair thing ever. So really to is. give anybody a chance at living longer and to experience the rest of their lives and not letting them get a bill afterwards, it's yeah. like a no brainer to go and support the cause, yeah. even though we're not country music fans. But I think they like tap into the country music radio a lot to get them to fundraise. So now they're like, hey, like radio is not as popular as it used to be. We need to start looking for the new class of like influencers to work with to kind of spread the message about why they do fundraising it's to help these kids and i think that's really what it was i think the country cares aspect of it was really just the fact that this was a seminar like a giant educational program for the people who have who are reaching audiences which i believe is pretty much just the country music stations like they specifically work with it yeah right so then it makes sense to like okay in the new chapter of things this is only the second year that saint jude was working with influencers they were like well why don't we just get everybody here and run the program once that makes sense to me you know yeah definitely yeah, I was just moved by moved by everybody's stories and everybody who was working there. Just very, very good people. There was one really funny thing that happened that I want to share. Okay. Because you know me, guys. Like, it's all very serious and very emotional. And I have to, like, have fun or I'm going to be really sad. So we go to this dinner. It's called the Angels Among Us Dinner. Right. It's kind of like the apex 
of the trip, right? Brother Osborne's playing. All the radio people are there. It's in this giant ballroom at the Peabody Hotel. Gorgeously set up. Beautiful food. Like, it's just, it's gorgeous. Like, the uplighting, the floral arrangements is incredible. So, do you know when you're in those big ballrooms at, like, event centers, they have, like, those stadium lights, those, like, I don't know, stage lights that are on the ceiling and they kind of, like, go across the room? Well, the table that all the, the influencers were setting at was table 24, and it was kind of to the side, and one of the lights that was kind of lighting up the whole room from that main light, lighting station was blaring right at our table. And it was like kind of annoying, but there was one specific seat that I sat in because we got to the table first, and I was like, oh, I'm definitely not sitting here because if you look to the right where the stage is, like it feels like the light is blaring from the side onto your eyeball. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just going to sit... <laughs> to the side of it and then it's like bright but it's not like hurting me right so i like forgot about it for like five minutes because i'm stupid and this girl comes over who's in the group and i'm like and she's like hey how are you and i'm like oh sit right here like sit next to me i'm like being nice i'm like oh sit with us and she sits down and then i forget that that's the lighting situation so when the performances start and the speakers start everyone kind of turns their chair and i can see that she's immediately like not into her seat because the light is on her eye and every time I'm sitting behind her so every time like they would change the color of the light from like pink to blue to whatever she would like glare at the light <laughs> and it was like she was making it she was so upset and she turned around at me at one point she's like is this blinding you this light and I was like I'm okay but I forgot that that was that seat and I made her sit there and at one point she was like I'm getting I'm getting a drink and she left for like 45 minutes and came back she left for an entire set yeah she was like I can't do this in this seat and the entire time I'm like I I did you put her there I put her there I know you didn't mean to oh my god I was telling this story in the room at night and I like couldn't breathe I was laughing so hard because the way that her face would like turn and jerk to look at the light when the light would change every single time I was like ooh sorry about that sorry 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 <laughs> um but yeah I don't know I like think of that story like almost daily since we got back and it just makes me laugh okay so then something happened to me we're waiting for drinks at like one of the dinners this was oh yeah that was this was that night but it was before we got in we're, we're waiting for drinks and there was a girl that we had met and she was super nice and she was with she was some higher up she like had worked with Taylor Swift. So she's like, I'm mad respect for her. And she's wearing like a really cute dress and she leans in and she's just like, and she kind of mumbled and she was just like, uh, I feel like everybody here thinks I'm wearing a skimpy dress. And I was like, I don't think anybody here is thinking that like, do your thing, like wear the skimpy dress. And she's like, what? And I'm like, wait, what? And she goes, I said, I'm really sleepy. And I didn't know how to process. I didn't know how to respond. I just kind of stood there. I was like, Oh, so embarrassed and her boss was next to her so i was like oh my god i was waiting in line for a drink too so i couldn't even i couldn't walk away oh. i could not walk away i should have just walked away i was just so embarrassed but she talked to me after that and like it was like whatever Jimmy. dust under the rug what are they saying yeah soup it under the rug yeah yeah it was so loud fine, it was, was so loud in there very embarrassed and yeah i couldn't hear anybody speaking of loud we wake up the next day to get going we're supposed to be leaving Fire alarms go off at 7 o'clock at the Peabody Hotel. 7 a.m. We're on the 11th floor. It's And the fire alarm at the Peabody Hotel is a duck quacking. It's like the theming doesn't have to go this intense, everybody. <laughs> we're in danger, but we're going to make it silly. We had to walk down 11 flights of stairs behind the slowest old people ever. It's like if we were going to die in this fire, I would push them. I'm not and joking. We're not both going down together because you have bad knees. Like... Okay, young and able, out the door first. I'm sorry. It's like, get out of the way. Like, I knew it wasn't real. Because, you know, like fire alarms, someone's talking about on the bus. Like, we're conditioned to believe that every fire alarm is fake because it's like they make us do them so much in school that now when a real emergency happens, we just instantly think it's not real. Yeah, like our friend Kenzie, who literally was texting us and would not get out of bed. She's like, I know this isn't real. And it wasn't. But by the time we got to the 11th floor behind old, old Peabody herself... <laughs> The fire alarm stop. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? The minute we get down 11 flights of stairs to the lobby, it turns off. But we were quack, up. Quack, we quack. were up and we grabbed our coffee and we went. Yeah. I just like, oh God, someone pulled it. Someone pulled it. Yeah. You know, at seven in the morning, like that's not cute. Wait, speaking of coffee. Okay. We're on a flight from Memphis to Atlanta. We have a layover. So it's a very quick flight. And they were a little bit slow to get everybody like their drinks which i don't care fine by me like if i miss the drinks and the snacks like i don't need it we're on the flight for like an hour yeah 
but they come by us. And I guess I wasn't really paying attention too much. I was doing my word search as I do. And she asked if we wanted coffee, tea, or water. I'm like, I need to pep it up because I have one more flight and then I have to drive home from LaGuardia. And we drank at Chili's before. So we're feeling a little sleepy because we got drunk at Chili's. Right. As we should at the airport. Like, come on now. So we order our coffee, no creamer, boiling hot, which usually I feel like they're not that hot. No, I disagree. You think they're super hot on a plane? Anyone that's ever had a coffee or tea on a plane, it's like, it's always boiling. Wait. We got the fresh pot. Remember the person in front of us, they brought out a fresh pot for the person in front of us. I'm telling you though, regardless if it was the fresh pot or not, it's always pretty fresh because they're just making it for the bring out. It's always, it always is really hot, but yes, ours was a fresh pot. Irregardless, we're sitting there drinking our drinks, drinking our hot coffee. It's too hot to drink. And then they make the announcement that we have to put our tables in their upright positions because we are descending. Yeah, into some turbulent air as well. Yeah, so what do we do? We have no choice because they just walk around with those Target bags to collect trash. And I'm like, I cannot hand this to her. Well, the, the, the plane is going down. My, I'm holding a boiling cup of hot coffee, which, by the way, also tastes like absolute shit. The woman makes her rounds. We look at her and we're like, we're good. She's, we, we're chugging. We're burning our esophagus, literally cooking our insides. And then she knows. She came back again. She goes, are you boys Okay. And we had to give it over. We were like, can you take our cuppies? Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, take my cuppy, please. She's like, ew, you're going to get kicked off. Uh, but it was a great trip. One more thing before we go. Uh, on the step and repeat, they also have these little selfie things where you can take it on an iPad. I feel like everybody's kind of done it. We didn't know that all the selfies and the gifts and the dumb shit that we were doing on camera that we thought was in the privacy between you and I was emailed, email blasted out to every single person. Who was at that conference? In one group file. So when I got the email, there was like 180 photos were taken at the photo booth. And there's four of us mingled, like sprinkled in throughout. And it's like me and Jonathan doing the stupidest poses. Thank God we didn't do anything inappropriate. I know. I was so embarrassed. Like we pressed start over. Like we didn't get it sent to our phones. We were just like, we're over it. But they saved every single photo. Yeah. It was like, oh, boomerang option. Let's try this. Oh, we can make a GIF. Let's do this one. (laughs) (laughs) What were we doing? I don't know. (sighs) Memphis was fun, though. You guys should definitely check it out. St. Jude's was great. Thank you for having us. Thank you, St. Jude. And yeah, let's start the show. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Morning announcements. Morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we believe you should spread like wildfire and gossip. I have a really crazy one this week. I'm actually so excited to tell the story. All right, let's get into it. Because it's like, okay, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. It's just like, how? How is this real? I'm there's And there's so much to be that's unanswered. It's so chaotic. Right, let's get into it. Okay, the article is from the Kansas City Star because there were so many people who, who covered this, but I was like, let me let me support local news. Um, by Mitchell Willett. Okay, Thanks, so the, the title is Hardy's workers stole from drive-through customers to bail out inmates. Indiana cops say. Okay. So at least 10 employees at Hardy's restaurant in Indiana are accused of taking part in a scheme to bail out jail inmates using money stolen from customers. Are you processing that sentence? Because I read that and I was like, wait, what? It's like, how are people robbing customers to then bail out inmates? So authorities launched an investigation after noticing suspicious um, irregularities with the jail accounts of certain inmates. With large amounts of money being put into their account from outside the jail, um, the same inmates were bonding out of the jail almost immediately. So they get these like almost like debit cards. From the jail and like for like what from food at the cantina like I'm not sure what they do with them like it's yeah, just like let's make phone calls or whatever like this large amount be deposited into their account and then they could bond out with it because now they had enough money to like go on bond and it was like happening immediately okay. so it was just so weird that the cops like saw it happen like twice and they're like this never happens here like now we're keeping like an eye on it so the investigation undercovered a complex fraudulent scheme involving a certain certain employees of the Hardy's fast food restaurant in Michigan City Indiana through August and September, investigators say workers targeted drive through customers, snapping photos of their debit cards and debit card information as they paid for their meals. Money was taken from those accounts and deposited into the jail accounts of inmates, which they used to pay bills according to their release. So, like, once you get released from jail, if you have extra money on your account, they just give you, like, a prepaid ATM card. Okay. So... 
I'm kind of confused here because I'm not sure how these Hardy employees were targeting specific inmates. And then, then from there, like making them go to an ATM to like get rid of them, get like, like take out the rest of the money. Yeah. It was like an underground little system. Like I, the people who were in it, they knew. Yeah. Like, if so, you know, you know. So in total investigators say $14,700 were stolen from customers. How many people were bailed out to this? Hey? Um, I don't know how many people were bailed out. Cause but I want to know how many that spread spread amongst. There were 10 employees oh. at the Hardee's. This is a fast food restaurant. 10 employees were involved in this grand scheme. And it's really funny because they won't like list which Hardy's location it was, but there's only one in this city. Yeah, so it's, it's like, like figured out. We, it's only one Hardy's. And if we know it's in this city, there's only one option. So it's them. 10 employees were in. Who thought of this idea? It's like 50% of them. So were least. they calling the inmates and being like, this is the plan. We're going to bond you out, but then we're going to go to the ATM directly after and you're going to need the cash. Well, it could have been like friends of theirs is what my assumption is or family. And they're just like, okay, let's all work together. And then they're stealing the money from the customers and just probably taking some money for themselves. So the, they this these ten hardiest employees know that many people in jail. Could be unbelievable. I'm just like really. I want to know more about how they know. So nine of the employees have like reported to like jail. I don't know, not jail, or like to like the police station about this charge. Right. One girl's on the run. She's like, I'm not going. I'm not doing it. They're all. Okay, I'm gonna be petty. They're all like really scary looking. Like, oh, and there's all 10 of them have a mugshot now, and they all are terrifying looking. If you guys live in Michigan City, Indiana, you already heard this story. Um, it's at 5223 Franklin Street. Because if I was close by, I'd be like, okay, Avoid let me it. visit the famous Hardee's. So, oh, you want to visit? The Hardee's. Well, don't use your debit card. Use cash. Well, yeah, I'll use cash. And obviously, like, they're pretty short staff right now. They just lost 10 employees. That is so many employees. Yeah. Isn't that weird? At a fast food place, that's a lot. So it got me thinking. I've never been to Hardee's. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been? I've been to Hardee's at like a, um, uh, like a rest stop. Okay, so I've never even seen one. Is it like a Midwestern thing? It's giving Midwest. Is that the one with the star? Yes. Hardy's Carl Jr.? Oh, uh, I think they're separate, but it does have the star. Yes. I I think it's a Midwest thing, I do believe. So obviously I went on the website and I did some deep diving, not on the article, but on the website of Hardy's to see what food I would like to order. Um, it looks like the burgers are okay. Burgers are a really popular thing there. The chicken sandwiches look really good. A pretty expansive breakfast sandwich menu, I would say. Um, not much for you. Let's not say much that. for me. I would say practically nothing you can eat there other than the fries. French fry and a fribble. I am going to list a couple items that I thought were really interesting. Please do. The pork chop and gravy biscuit combo. Okay. That's a breakfast item. That, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> well, it's like a pork chop in a biscuit with gravy all over Doesn't it. a pork chop have a bone in it? Oh, no. Well, it could. Like a T-bone? Listen, do you think... Also, do you think there's bones in chicken nuggets? Like, oh, obviously, it's a fast food place. Squash 10. This one... This put this on my gravestone. I've never seen a this one right here. I've never seen a fast food item describe me better. The big hot ham and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Am I not a the big, big hot, hot ham? Guys, what did I eat before this episode started? Four slices of honey ham. Cold. Cold with a little cold bit of mustard. Honey, cold sweet ham. Yeah, but a big hot honey ham. I told you this story on the podcast before when I used to when I was younger. I used to take Martin's potato rolls. This is really the hot dog sandwich. The hot dog rolls, Martin potato rolls, and I put I would put deli ham in it and a slice of the American cheese that was in that like weird cellophane wrap, like, mm -hmm. and I and I put it in the microwave for three minutes. Your brother loves to remind me of that. And I'd open the microwave and the entire house would be gassed <laughs> out with my hot ham and cheese, and I would like. Yeah. I was a fat porker. I was a husky kid. That's literally Jackson brings that up every time we see him. Yeah, because it was really traumatizing for him. And I'm like really into ham and cheese. Yeah, the house, the house probably stank, but it's not that bad if you're gonna consume it. But everybody else just has to linger in it. That's gonna that made your clothes smell probably. I don't care. This one good. What else is on the menu? So it's big hot ham and cheese. It's like literally, I want people to start calling me the big hot ham and cheese. I love that. That's so I was like laughing out loud. Um, yeah, but there's there's nothing for you there. Mm. Well, guess what their kids' menu is called? Um, it's cute. What Star Pals? Oh, Wait, cute! Isn't that so cute? That is cute. Are we talking Pepsi or Coca Cola products? Shut the fuck up! Because my last note is last to note is a Coke product store. I love. We are the same <laughs> person. That's why I was curious. We have to know. It's so important to see if it's a Coke store or not. And they don't have Dr Pepper though. Do they have Starry? Mm, no. Oh, that's Pepsi. Pepsi. 
Don't be foolish. Sorry. Um, but there is one item on, on the kids' menu, the Star Pal menu that you can have. Is it a grilled cheese? It's a grilled cheese. It's always a fucking grilled cheese. You know, I got like rid of their, cheese. I like grilled cheese too. You know, I got rid of their grilled cheese that I was really fucking with. Who? Sonique. Oh, Sonic. Sonic got rid of it. Sonic is has such an incredible expansive menu. I don't I have not really tried a lot of items there because it's so overwhelming. But of all places, I think you could do really well there because they have like fried pickles, mozzarella sticks, tater tots. Like, oh my god. Uh, do they have a fish? No, and if they did, I don't know if I would trust it. But oh my god, the ocean water, like mm. I can fuck it up at Sonic. I there, I will find something, everything. It, it's just so good. Their grilled cheese is so good. They have to bring it back. If they didn't already, it might be back. I, it's been a minute since I've been. You would have loved the Friendly's grilled cheese because they would do it on the flat top and it was really greasy. Mm. I like a gr a greasy grilled cheese. I saw this really funny guy on TikTok. He's like, one thing that white people really popped off with was the combo of grilled cheese and tomato soup. Yeah. I say, listen, that's our culture. That's good. You want to see our culture? Have a grilled cheese and tomato soup. You ever put a pickle, like I dry off a pickle and I dry off a tomato and I put it in the middle of, of my grilled cheese and it's really deluxe. I think I would like that. I am really into a uh, tomato and a grilled cheese. Mm. I think it's exquisite. I also like a slice of bacon. I'm not mad at it. Okay. You can really step it up. Melted cheese is so good, but God forbid I put a piece of ham in there. Suddenly I'm 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 the criminal. Yeah, when you microwave it. Arrest me, Hardies. Add me to your list of failed employees, guys. Anyways, long story short, if you're gonna bond people out of jail, make sure you do it a little bit more stealthy. Don't put too much money on the card. Um, and from now on, I want to be referred to as Big Hot Ham and Cheese. I love that. That's We're my story. Noted of that. Good to know. Is that a fun one? I like that. I I there's more to come, and this is gonna be a movie. And if not, I'll write it. Oh my God, That this literally should be a movie. 10 employees is just, it's bonkers. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. And we have to, should we post the mugshots or is that inappropriate? We should. We should. It's like they did, this is the consequences of their own actions. Yeah, and I'll put a heart around the girl that's like still on the loose or whatever. I'm not really sure if I'm telling that part, but listen, you know this, this, this new podcast isn't always with the right information. Yeah, we we're just... just Doing, doing our best. Our best. We're what, doing our best. What is your article this week? All right. So I'm going to give you the title at the end of it. Are you, you ready? to do that. I do. Okay. So this is from the New York Post by Patrick Riley. Um, like I said, I'll save the title for the end. So there's this woman who is minding her own business and she's walking through Customs and Border Patrol at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. Um, she's tired. She just got back from her trip in Kenya and she's ready to go home. Hey, we've all been there. Of course. Not to Kenya, but I mean in that mental state. <laughs> so then one piece of her luggage is seized. Inside was a collection of giraffe turds. <laughs> no. When asked about it, she said she intended on making a necklace out of it. The concept sounds crazy, but to her, it's not new because she would make jewelry out of moose poop at her home studio in Iowa. You ever heard of anything so crazy? Wait, this is so funny because when you were telling this story, I was just thinking about how I saw a video the other day of a woman making jewelry out of poop. And this must have been her <gasps> with the moose poop. I saw the video of her with her moose poop. Ew. Yeah. And they're all like a big, they're like the moose poop's kind of hard. Yeah, but okay, so like, what do you have to like crystallize it? Like, what do you, what's the process there? She, no, she, I don't think there's any curing if that's what you're asking. She, at one point, I'm not joking, there's a little figurine of a person and she's like, this one's a, a boy and this one's, this one's a girl, so it's got boobs. And she put little boobs on the little person. With her moose poop. There was, a, it would look like, a, almost look like a voodoo doll. That's disgusting. But it was all poop. It was a poo poo doll. So she was like, doll. wait, not me exploring new avenues, a new scat. Yeah, I wonder if this was her. So it's gotta be her. Uh, you never know if this is like a popular thing that may clearly there's a niche if people are making this and selling it on Etsy. God, I should deep down dive down that deep hole. That should not say deep hole when talking about poop. Anyway, I'm gonna read a quote from this. The CBP said animal feces from Kenya could contain African swine fever, classic swine fever. Gotta love the classic swine Forgot fever. Forgot about it. Newcastle disease foot and mouth disease, and swine vascular disease. So the giraffe poop was seized, like I said, it was taken and destroyed by steam sterilization. Good. Per USDA protocol, officer says. Um, quick question again, ma'am, like why are you making a necklace out of poop? And two, what is destroyed by steam sterilization? This is like how COVID started. It's like people like just like acting up. Relax. You don't need to do the giraffe poop. And where were you? 
Girl, she was in where, Kenya. But where were you in Kenya? They're, they're not just everywhere. She like hiding hide in the ground for it? Maybe. Probably. So also, like, how do we know it was giraffe poop? Because she said it because she don't know. She, um, but she you know what? Poop. Okay, wait, here's the thing too. She, uh, they would have found it regardless, but she claimed it. She like went up in there. You know how when they asked us when we came back from Bali, they're like, what'd you get? And I was nervous because I had seashells and like pieces of coral. And I was like, I'm not going to put them in the ocean. I swear to God, I swear to God. But I thought, you know, I don't want to fuck with the ecosystem. And this woman's like, oh, I got a box of poop. Got a box of giraffe poopy. She probably was like, I cannot get through without telling them. It's too much. She brought too much. She got greedy. If she would have got a couple nuggets... She probably could have smuggled them. Yeah, and there's a picture, and I'm not sure the protocol on like YouTube and Instagram with posting that because it is still poop. You know, they like will blur it. it out. Yeah, maybe I'll blur it out. Maybe I just won't post it. Use your imagination. They were like the size of like little walnuts. Like they they were little turds. It wasn't a healthy human poop. I'll tell you that. Which is crazy because they're so big. It's like, girl, eat some more. Yeah. That's why they're so skinny and hot. Oh my god! Because they're so like right. they're just like we're eating a leafy green diet and like don't worry about me over and then I'm over there like look at the Hardee's menu, <laughs> daydreaming at the big hot, hot ham big cheese. Hot ham. That's the difference between me and a giraffe. Giraffe is like I would never eat at a Hardee's. You dumb bitch. <laughs> Um, okay, go off. That lady's gross. Yeah. Though. Okay, Wait, so I want to talk about the diseases. What? Let's talk. Those are really scary. They obviously are scary. So yeah, I just don't like that. <laughs> like Why I don't like, like someone that? selfishly like making jewelry out of poop and then putting the rest of us at risk for a hand, mouth, and foot explosion. Yeah. Have you ever seen what that looks like on a person? No. Oh yeah. Go on WebMD. I'm good. Yeah, you should be good. And so should she. Because she's putting the rest of us at risk. I hope she gets jail time. Well, I don't think she did. I think she just got it taken and they were like, she's definitely got like a note next to her name in the system, you know. Did she go to Kenya for the poop specifically? I really couldn't tell you. Part of me says quite possibly. <laughs> okay, keep going. So the title of that article was Woman's Box of Giraffe Poop That She Was Planning on Making Into a Necklace Seized at Minneapolis Airport. The Is this the Daily Mail? Uh, this is the New York Post. Yeah, even better. The New York Post, what they're really good at is like, hey, you don't even have to click the article. Yeah. We're just going to tell you a little fact. And if you want to read more, you can read it. I thought about the, the Daily Post or the New York the Post. York. <laughs> Whatever. You know the deal. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. Would you like to go first, my love? Yeah, I'll go first. You know what I hate? What do you hate? I hate hot air balloons. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I saw a video on Instagram this week of a man like falling out of a hot air balloon. He was hanging by his feet. It was like during the launch. And then somehow he like stayed on and it was so windy that the air balloon came back down and it smashed against the ground and he fell out of it and then the hot air balloon just went up into the, into the air was this something that happened recently or was this like a clip from the 90s i, I believe it was recently oh because i literally saw something similar from the 90s which is like come on now i just think it's so unnecessary and scary and i never want to be in one and i do not trust them and i think they're freaky and creepy and they look great on a screensaver but let's leave it there okay <laughs> unless i'm in like turkey at that gorgeous balloon launch that they have there have you ever seen that online no it also looks really good in arizona it's giving arid it's yeah. got to be an arid desert like climate and it's got to be at sunrise and it's got to be vibrant and then i'm into it but these whole bunk, donkey, 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 donkey. It's like, sh get a hobby. Watch a show. They're like, bitch, I have a hobby. You hate me. Um, I just think they're wildly unsafe. Also, <laughs> why the wicker? Why the wicker? Let's talk about that. Have we not evolved? We need to do this in a wicker basket? Is this to like preserve the history of it all? Because the reason why hot air balloons, they started like aviation essentially. It was like our first feet into aviation. So it's like, what are we keeping the memory alive? We grew. We could take a flight on Delta. You think Delta's using wicker basket seats? We, we know how to fix that now. Imagine us sitting in the wicker basket, chugging our coffee as we slam into the ground. <laughs> oh my God. You know who also hates uh, hot air balloons? Who? Cattle. <laughs> I read this online. I'm uh, sure. Okay. Cattle, guys, a group of cows, they fucking hate hot air balloons. It causes them such anxiety. They don't know what it is. And the farmers hate it too because the farmers then have to deal with high anxiety cattle 
And then we're not getting good milk. It's probably sour that day. You had scared milk. It's You ever had scared milk? You ever had a cup of milk that tastes bad? It's because that cow saw a hot air balloon. <laughs> and they don't, it doesn't need to happen anymore. It really doesn't. And don't worry. I did some research. Please do. About the safety of this. Okay. Um, most of my information came from hotair.com. <laughs> okay, your so, one-stop shop for all things hot air balloon. balloon. It seems like these people know what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Because there's not a lot of stats on this. And it's like, of all people, they probably carry like this history and information. Also, this information could be biased. Was the website secure? I don't know. I didn't look if it had a .gov on it, babe. I don't think it did. HTTPS. Uh, well, whatever. I didn't, we'll, we'll go back and check. But um, there is some information on here. So from they had they had information dating back to the fifties and I was like no one cares. We'll start with the eighties. <laughs> okay, so there this is all about crash records, by the way. Okay. Because I'm fearful of these things and I'm trying to fear monger my audience. So <laughs> the most frequent um, crashes were recorded during 1984 to 1988, with a total of 138 crashes in those four years. Um, during that five year per- period, a staggering 51 percent of those crashes involved recreational flights while paid rides only incurred 28%. So 28% of those crashes were people that were like enjoying like uh, an attraction. Do you know why it was between those years? Why? Because that was when Four Loco had their original formula. Oh, so so guess how many deaths were there? Oh God, how 10? Six. Oh, okay. That makes you feel good? Well, is it nationwide? Yes. Or this could, I, don't, I think this is nation. I think this is, I think this is national. And that's between those four years? Yeah, I'm going to keep going, though. Okay. Don't worry. So now we're going to bump from 2000 to 2011. We're just going to skip the 90s. Yeah, why not? Because hotair.com, they don't want... The big conspiracy with hotair.com. What happened in the 90s? We're not carrying any information there, are we? Yeah, what's going on there? So from 2000 to 2001, um, there was 164 crashes, which that's over... This is now over an 11-year span. 86 um, of those crashes were between 2000 and 2004. So they're really trying to figure it out then. Five fatalities in that 11 year span. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to skip some more years because hot air does not have concise data. Um, from May of 2014 to June of 2021. Guys, if you've been zoning out because there's too many numbers, reel it in because now we're in current time. So from 2014 to 2021, they saw a spike in balloon tragedies. 24 people dead. <gasps> No. Yes. Probably because of cell phones. This, what do you think? People are trying to make videos. I don't know. 24 people died from this very, I don't know, not necessary cause. Get out of the wicker and onto the ground. Yeah. You're not going to believe it. I just heard. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was clever. That was cute. Yeah. I'm just really anti hot air balloon. It's so stress inducing. I do have a little bit of a fear of heights in this case because, so do you know how they work? This is interesting. The hot air fills the balloon and it lifts. Because hot air is like... Rises. It rises and cold air is dense. So it's like kind of trapping it in this kind of thing. But it seems like what are we pulling levers? Yeah, it's very... Renaissance. It's very Renaissance. It's very uh, um, around the world in 80 days. It's very Wizard of Oz. And I don't think we need... How many people can you fit into a basket? Like, is there a chair in the basket? Or am I standing like a typical... No, you're standing. You're absolutely standing. So your knees are locked. So okay. If yeah. Bad blood, blood flow. flow. Think about that. High. Also, altitude. Let's talk about that. How high can you go? What if you keep going up and it just won't stop going up? True. Exactly. I don't know how it works because I'm never going to get in one. It happened to the wizard. So let's talk about when I think hot air balloons are appropriate. Okay. I love them in a child's room in a mobile. Nursery appropriate. Oh, it's the cutest nursery. We're talking figures, not an actual. (laughs) No, but let it let it end there. Yeah. Let it end there. Yeah. Do not let the child see it once his frontal cortex starts to like form because then he's going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of keep it for your own selfish needs and be like, look how cute the baby room is. But then he's like, oh, what's that? Burn it. Burn it. Never let a baby know what a hot air balloon is. That's rule 10 of parenting. Never let a baby know what a hot air balloon is. So hot air balloons can fuck off. Yeah. I'm anti them. And let that be known. So. How do you safely land in uh, a hot air balloon? Do they ever like land calmly? Because to me, the basket's tipping over. Everybody just has to brace themselves. You should have seen that man locking his ankles on the wicker and his back crashing into the ground as the wicker basket rolled over his body. His ankles fell out and then the thing went into the atmosphere. And you're telling me that we should be doing this on a daily basis? Yeah. No. Also, whatever happened to blimps? 
Yeah, <laughs> how do blimps work? My God. Led Zeppelin put it out and they said, and this is the death of blimps. Would you ride in a blimp? I don't think I would ride in a blimp. No, but I love seeing one over a stadium. It feels appropriate. Yeah, Goodyear. I'm like, go off Goodyear. What's So a blimp is kind of like a luxury hot air balloon. It's enclosed. You can get like to the ins. You can be in where the uh, where all the air is up there. That's not true. That is true. There was one I because I was curious. I looked it up, and there's like a blueprint, and someone had like a giant dance floor inside one of them with no windows. Yeah, but if it's a club, who needs a window? You're really excited and like high energy in there because they're pumping oxygen in there. Oh my god, everybody's just high as hell. Oh my god, let's get on a blimp. Yeah, but all that, no, that's just like too much because too much oxygen's flammable. Anyways, what's your take on hike? Okay, my take hike, it's pretty short. Um, I'm just going to say it's the websites that verify celebrities' net worths because I feel like they're never right. You love to look up. You're like, I wonder how much this person is worth. And then you'll Google it knowing damn well, like after Googling yourself, like it's really just grabbing at whatever. Because you got to take into consideration what these people are like invested in. How is a publication that runs for free going to figure out how much like Kylie Jenner is actually worth? I need you to let this one go. Why? Because it brings me joy. Okay. Okay. Last night, I was. I said, I went on my phone last night. I said, how much is Stephen King worth? 400 million. I don't know if that's true or not. It's not. You don't know that. <laughs> I do. Look at uh, look at R- redrubythesleaze.com. That just came out on Netflix. Like, it's not right. Like, he just has so many projects. I feel like, I don't know. You want to, let's play a guessing game really quick. I think it's a fun activity. How much? Okay, I'm on celebritynetworth.com, which is not a secured website. But, uh, oh, wait, it, you know what? Hey, they paid for that security. It is HTTPS. So, so, it is so now <clears throat> we're already up, guys. The people who look up net worth to score one for us. All right. So how much do you think, according to CelebrityNetWorth.com, a secured website, not sponsored, how much do you think Carrot Top is worth? Ew, I don't like looking at him too long. Um, is he gay? He's not. He's not, but he's definitely an ally. And I feel like we shouldn't push the question. I was really, honestly, that was rude of me to even bring it up. Well, you just did. What do you think he's worth? 10 million. 70 million. Yeah, he's had a very successful Vegas show for a long time. Good for him. He's like, fuck you, Zachary. You're fucking not on my level. And that's right. How about Penn? Penn Gillette uh, from Penn and Teller. Oh, what, what are you in a Vegas kick here? Um, I'm just, I'm clicking the related <laughs> stories. Um, I would say 150 million. 200 million. Yeah, I'm pretty close. Okay. Let's go to our girl, Taylor Swift. So I think she's going to be worth a billion pretty soon. According to this website, which was updated today, eight hundred million. Yeah. Again, I feel like she's probably more than that. I don't think they're that far off. Am I on there? Do you want me to look? Yeah, I'm nosy. One time I looked it up and it was really wrong, but I'm new. There's there was a website that said you have pitch black eyes and a girlfriend. <laughs> it also said I was like five two. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not on here, babe. I'm so sorry. They said I had black eyes. Isn't that scary? I can request. No, don't put me on there. Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Joe. Scar Joe, Scar Joe, Scar Joe. She does a lot of beauty campaigns. A lot. Let me guess. You've also been pretty good with your guesses. You've been like pretty in the window. I know. I, I, because I'm a fan of doing this. Okay. I would say 75 million. 165. Yeah, because she was doing Avengers too. She's like, what is she, Black Widow? Oh my god, good sound by Iggy Azalea. Black, 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 a widow, baby. Okay, let's do one more. Rita Ora. Let me look her up. Okay, Six here. million. Okay. <laughs> Rita Ora. Okay, here she comes. Here she comes around the road? Updated seven minutes ago. <laughs> I would notice no way. <laughs> it says no, updated seven minutes ago. Someone got Rita Ora seven minutes ago because they knew we were coming? Get yeah. Out. Six million. 30 million. Good for Rita. Yeah, but we're really just oh Pia Mia. Where has she been? Oh, look who's getting excited about the website. Guess Pia Mia. Six million. Eight million. Okay, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah. So I think it's just a fun activity. I think it's fun to go online where you're watching a show and saying, how much are they worth? There's people out there that are just like me. It's a, an activity that we enjoy doing. Okay, that's fair. I just wish, you know, that we were being told the truth. Maybe that's what it is. But at the end of the day, it's really nobody's business what anybody's yeah. worth. Why don't you release your financials? I have $25 in the bank and I am in student debt. I I paid some this morning and I did calculate that I'm in student debt for the following 4.1 years. That's not that bad, babe. It's not that bad, but I've been paying for about 10 years. Well, I'm proud of you because you got that degree. 
And that's why we have this beautiful podcast because of the things you learned. True. Oh my God, you're so freaking right. Look at you using your degree. Look at me. These stands, I bought the wrong ones. That is evident. Yeah, but I think the mics are working. I kind of feel like I'm a little weary still about the hands free. Like I'm still trying to figure it out. I know. But I'm not hating it so far. Yeah, okay. Audio check, you guys. As a reminder, we're using new mics. What are we thinking? How do we like it? Do we like it? Are we loving it? Are we hating it? Are we loving it or are we listing it? I am loving celebrity net worths. And I think it's so funny that it's your take a hike because I love it so much. Okay, well, fuck a hot air balloon. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Crush of the Week. Camper Crush of the Week, everybody. This is the part of the show where we share what we're loving, who's doing a great job, what we thought about when we said, hey, I really want to talk about that on the podcast. You go first. Okay, my crush of the week are greatest hits albums. Okay. I is this a controversial take? I feel like for some people it is. I feel like I'm on your side so far. Yeah. For the most part. I just think I love to see all of an artist's best music or like most successful singles all put on one album, especially if they've been around for a long time. Yeah, why not? So like let me use this for example. Queen. Okay, I thought we were gonna go with Elvis. No. Do you know, that would have been a good one. That would have been a good one. I'm sorry. It's okay. Should we stop the podcast and I'll, st- I'll fix it? Yeah, you guys, thank you so much. If you could smash that like button, <laughs> we'll be back next week. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Queen, sorry. Wait, guess how many albums they've had. Um, I'm going to say eight. Fifteen. Oh, okay. Fifteen albums. And only one of the albums came out after Freddie Mercury died. Okay. So there, he was alive for all of them. So many album. Many album. Do you think, Jessica Alba, do you think that like you could, I want to be able to listen to the album with his best hits. I can't go through all those albums here, my favorites. Yeah, but okay. All right. So I'm going to read you a couple of the songs. This is not really- <laughs> You're just really going to read us Queen's top songs? Is that what this crush of the week is? Okay, read us Queen's <laughs> top songs. <laughs> this was like a really good idea for a segment in my head. And now, <laughs> now in execution, everybody's like, <laughs> we know. <laughs> this is like the stupid. <laughs> This is like the dumbest. Cause it's week fifty eight. Give me a fucking break, okay? You know how hard it is to do this every single week. But <laughs> well, let me let me let me defend myself. Okay. So I went on Reddit. Okay. And there's this like really cool Reddit page, which then maybe this is my crush of the week. God, I can switch it up. Um, it his name is this is a post from ten years ago. It basically was like fight my opinion, kind of. I forgot the name of it. I'll look it up. This, oh, like change my opinion or, or change my mind or something? That was the theme of it, but it wasn't, that's what it wasn't called. Okay. But that's what it basically is. Or right. like defending my case, something like that. The user, Reddit user Spaghetti Blasphemy wrote this post. He <laughs> says, whenever I listen to music, I like to listen to the whole album. Hearing the song progression from the beginning to the end really feels like an adventure for me. Because of this, I can really listen to greatest hits albums. They feel contrived, like an artist just wants to make money off songs he's already released. They're also usually isn't a flow to these albums. They're just like stick 15 popular songs in a CD. Artists didn't intend for us to listen to Grace Hits albums all the way through. So I don't want them mocking up the music collection. So like that's that's why people don't like them. Okay, and I can see that because like thinking of like someone like Lana Del Rey who put very particularly puts her songs in a specific order. I get it. I feel like all really good artists will want you to listen from start to finish. I just like don't think it's that serious. And I think like I don't hate the artists for putting out a Grace of the album. Like the Queen one, Back to Queen. Mm-hmm. It's a great collection of some of their best songs. I'll read you a few. <laughs> <laughs> Another one bites the dust. <laughs> That's a good one. Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing at these? I've never heard of them. <laughs> You've heard of those, right? Please. Crazy little thing called love. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy little thing called love. Killer Queen. I love that one. She's a killer queen. Fat Bottom Girls. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard of Bicycle Race. Um, under pressure. Dun, dun, dun. Pushing dun, down. Dun, 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 Is that them? Go. Yeah. I had no idea. Uh, we will rock you. I've never liked that one. Boom, boom, clap. That was the original boom, clap. The sound of my heart. We are the champions. We certainly are. Not him being so gay, but putting out like literally like football bangers. Mm. It's not crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I like that. Flash. Ever heard of that one? No. Flash dance. I've heard of. Somebody to love. Of course. Oh, somebody. 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 Wait. Okay. 
Um, you're my best friend. You're my baby. Okay. Um, keep yourself alive. I'll do my best. Play the game. Sometimes I didn't know, but I think it's nice to have them all in one place. I'm going to stop talking about this. This is sitting really stupid here. Um, I just think some people like view music buffs are like anti them. And I think like there's nothing wrong with having all your favorites in one place. And I leave it at that. I will completely agree because I was at rest in peace of Jimmy Buffett, but the album that I had and smash after smash after smash was the yellow one. And it was, I think it was like his greatest hits. It was called like songs, you know, all the words to or something like that. Um, and that's the one that I remember because it was literally hit after hit after hit after hit Elvis. He's got a giant discography. I'm not in love with all of it. I gotta be honest. Dolly Parton's. Dolly Parton's discography. My God. I'm not gonna throw my girl under the bus, but like there are some songs that I can I can skip. But like even her greatest hits, she has like 20 greatest hits albums. She will not stop putting out music. The girl won't stop putting out. I go, waver. That's, uh, hey, I'm a fan of the Greatest Tats albums. Well, thank you for defending me in that mess of a segment. Jonathan, please take it over and save Crush of the Week. Please, okay. <laughs> please save the segment. So my Crush of the Week, um, I had to search it because I was like, did I do this before? And I don't think that I did because I have saved all of my notes from every episode we've done. But it's an Instagram account. And the Instagram account is a pretty cool hotel tour. Have you heard of that? No, I don't think. No, you from you, but I don't think you've talked about it on the show. Um, okay, so it's run. This account's run by Margaret and Corey Beaner. Corey Beaner, I used to do theater with at, in Illinois. Like his brother, there was a, a Big Brother Little Brother program, and his brother Kobe was my big brother two years in a row. So it was like, I'm kind of like in on the dynasty of this Instagram account, kind of. Oh my God, now you're doing a family plug. Yeah. Um. So I did <laughs> I did message him a while ago because this account was like blowing up and I realized like I followed it organically because you guys, I if you don't know, I do like Zillow reviews and I just love kitschy, crazy like hotels and shit that's just out of the norm, you uh -huh. know? And they were covering a lot of these things and I saw who was running it. And I was like, oh my God, like I remember this guy from years ago. So I did follow him. I did message him um, and he did not remember me. But you know what? That's okay. That was a humbling moment for myself. But oh, um, I'm sorry. But it's okay. Well, I was closer with his brother, but you know, whatever. Um, but they have this book that came out. It's called Hotel Kitsch. Again, this is not sponsored, but I have never pre-ordered a book. Have you? I just, I did just, uh, for the first time, I pre-ordered Britney Spears' memoir. Oh, okay. I That's, did, but I but I haven't. So yeah. you, you got the first one. So yeah, I haven't done that. I've never pre-ordered a book. I did pre-order this, and it just came in the mail yesterday. You guys, I, I'm going to have to show you. You're going to have to flip through it. I haven't flipped through it yet, but I like the cover. It's so cool. They go, like, obviously to, like, the Poconos, to the, all of the newlywed retreats. We love stuff like this, too. We, like, me and you, like, we really bond over, like, the love of Kitsch. Like, we really, like, always love kind of stuff like that. Yeah. That's and cool. they dive into the history of it. And you know cool. me, I'm a research bitch. I will research anything. And they have old photos of everything, and they take a bunch of these photos themselves, and it's just... um it's a really, really cool book if you're into that. Uh, the, the Madonna Inn, classic. The Bloom House in Texas. I'm sure you've probably seen it. I remember seeing it on like Tumblr back in the day. The Trixie Motel, obviously. We got to keep it modern. And there's this thing called, I couldn't believe this, the Love Cloud Mile High Club, which is like a, a little hotel room. Well, it's not even a hotel room. It's a private jet that they will, they will fly with you in the back and like let you fuck. Oh, that's so exciting, actually. Yeah. I don't know if they still do it because I did brush over it this morning. But it's like, and it's all like 1960s silk. Like everything is just like silky and And smooth. they encourage you to have sex? Yeah. Because it's like, guys. It's the Mile High Club. I, when I was younger, I thought it'd be easier to have sex on a plane. Oh my God, no. Y you can't have sex on a plane. No, what? But I can't even like take my shoes off. I There's no way you can have sex on, sex on a plane. And if you have... Write us in. Let us know. We'll read it on. Um, we'll read it on Trail Mix. We'd yeah, love oh to hear that story. I really would love to hear that smut. Um, but yeah, unless you're in private, like, how are you boning on a plane? So this is really fun because, per, honestly, I would like to be a part of the Mile High Club. I would enjoy that the accolade. Yeah, I think we should try it at some point. Maybe we could go to this to the Cloud Jet place. Can we can we pre-order a, a suite? <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know where it is. I'll have to check. Probably Vegas. it's giving Vegas energy. Come I'm on excited on. to flip through this book because I love the hot pink cover and we love a coffee table book. Yeah, we do. We do. And it's very well done. Like the aesthetic of it 
in a, in and of itself is like fantastic. So shout out to them. Again, their Instagram account is a pretty cool hotel tour. And the book is called Hotel Kitsch, which is spelled K-I-T-S-C-H. I always have a hard time with that word. But I just want to take tubby time in a martini glass. Wouldn't that be great? It, it, that's not hard for us. We can get there pretty easily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. That's that's pretty much what I've got. Imagine someone seeing your butthole from below. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's weird. Well, I like my butthole. Yeah, I like your butthole too. Thank you. <laughs> what song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. This is the part of the show where we share our song recommendations to you for the week. Songs that have been stuck in our head all week. They're in the episode description under a Spotify playlist in YouTube for free t- for you to listen. It's a little choppy. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to go first. <laughs> I know. I'm really trying today, guys. I am. I showed up. I'm in good spirits. Yeah. My brain is just on slow mo today. So, <laughs> my song is called Him Too by Sinead Harnett. Okay, let's tell this story. So, I've never heard of this woman before, Sinead Harnett. I've never heard this song before. But this week, when we were leaving Graceland, we decided to Uber to the um, airport instead of taking the shuttle because it was just going to take too long. Long story there. So I order an Uber. The woman that selects to be our driver is seven minutes away. And then for the next 10 minutes, she doesn't leave her spot for seven minutes, um, for 10 minutes. And she tells me she's getting gas, but she has not moved. I wanted to have a mental breakdown. I just think it's so obnoxious to be an Uber driver and to select to be a driver if you need to get gas. Like, you're wasting my time, girl. I don't care if I'm being, like, annoying. Like, you, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to the airport. I have a flight to catch. And you're getting gas? Like, why'd you say yes to my thing? You're being greedy A hundred percent. They're literally, like, reserving you for their own. And I'm, like, mad respect to, like, all Uber drivers and everybody driving out there. But, yeah, don't accept a ride and then be like, I'm going to go take a piss break i'm gonna go get gas while we're waiting for you when we're clearly going to the airport which hey we've got a time limit here yeah and obviously i I wanted to have time to get drunk at chili's yeah so (laughs) 10 minutes goes by and she's not moved and i canceled the driver and i'm actually gonna check my account after this to make sure i wasn't charged because i'm just doing that yeah so i was like jonathan please on your account can you get us a new driver so we do this girl picks us up she's mad cool she's got a really cool blonde wig on she's wearing like a really like stoned um it was like bedazzled headband on and usually when uber drivers pick you up up, they don't play music this girl said fuck the rules i'm playing music so loud and it's my music and it's my r&b and you're gonna deal with it and like she had city girls on when we pulled up and then she turned it off and i was like girl you could have kept it on but i was like she probably was like this is a little too much is a little inappropriate but she put this song on called him too um by shanae harnett and um it's basically about a girl who's boot up with her new man but then she realized that his ex is still in love with him and even though like he's moved on from him from her his ex has not moved on from him and she kind of feels bad about it but she's like hey i know you love him but i love him too so the chorus reads there's nothing i could say to take your pain away i know you hate me i know you do i'm just sorry i love him too because he's the only one you want and now he's moving on i know you hate me i know you do i'm just so sorry i love him too i love him too it's a very interesting like writing wise when i was listening to the lyrics because it wasn't like i got your man it was like a girl i'm so sorry you're going through a heartbreak like he's an amazing guy yeah she's like he's so great and he literally doesn't like you anymore and i get why you love him because i'm in love with him yeah. but he's it's kind of bitchy but it's like such good like sultry like amazingly like well done classic r&b song and our uber driver has his volume on on hot, like full volume basically yeah. and she's snapping and she's swaying putting on lip gloss she's singing at a red light she's putting on the lip gloss she doesn't care that we're in the backseat we're in her life she was the main character in this uber i was literally thinking i was like this is main character energy that i feel like people want to portray but like she just really didn't give a sh- I, the way that i put in a custom tip so i could give her more than the allotted amount and the way that i gave her five stars so quickly yeah, like it was such an enjoyable ride for me it was so funny at the end of the song because it's like such a good song and she has a great voice because she, she's singing loud enough for me to hear it at the end she goes mm, and then she snaps she was like mm, like yeah. so good <laughs> and i was like girl you're hysterical for just like jamming so intensely while ubering yeah. so um the song is actually really great i love it a lot you know what's really funny about her did you know where Sinead Hart's from Harnett's from? Where? Um, the UK. 
Oh. And I think it's so weird that people that have accents can hide them when they sing. Yeah, some people, not everybody. She did, though. I would have never have guessed. Me neither. It is weird how that kind of melts away. So the song, never heard of it before, but that, that interaction was just so inspiring and the song was so good. And she sold it for me so intensely that we love that Uber driver. She was killer. Yeah, love that. What's your song of the week? Uh, my song of the week, you guys, I'm going to keep it quick and short and simple. Um, it is I Got a Feeling in My Body by Elvis and Stuart Price. This was actually like a remix version that was for the movie that came out last year. But I think it's so fun. It's such a fun dancey bop, like taking a classic, like I'm sorry, snooze fast and really just turning it into something. Turn it in, turn it out. And it's like what Elvis would have wanted if he was collabing with like Marshmallow or something. I don't know. But yeah. I think it's a fun dancey track. It's like turning the music of yesteryear in today's modern clubhouse remix. It's kind of a fun little twist on it because we could add an Elvis song, but then you'd be like, okay, like I don't want to listen to like you ain't nothing but a hound dog and I don't want to listen to that either. But like this club yeah. mix, you might be like, okay, turn it up. Yeah, it was good. So that's really fun. Thanks and for adding that. You're welcome so much. It's it's a montage song from the movie. I'm sure you'll recognize it. But a it's like, you know those songs that it's like, oh, this is a montage song. Yeah, I like that kind of song. Yeah, high energy, got the 808s, like the ones can, and twos. You can see him like kind of age progressing or like traveling a lot in the yeah, movie. Yeah, the girls screaming, everybody cheering, flash bulbs, flash bulbs, the flash bulb sound effect everywhere. If you can't figure out how to do a montage for your movie, might we suggest adding a flash bulb? Yeah. Um, I like that both of our songs are a love letter to the beauty of Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. I love Tennessee. I love I, everything about it. We got to get to Nashville. We still haven't been. Yeah, that's the... We went to... Um, Gatlinburg and Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Forge. Been to Memphis. So we've been and to Smokies. And we have not been to, to Nashville. Yeah, that's the last kind of missing key for um, our Tennessee travels. Yeah. But I think that's all we have for you this week. If you haven't yet, we'd love for you to rate us five stars and give us a review on Apple Music or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. We have some really, really, really exciting news coming up for our podcast very soon. We cannot wait to tell you. Wink, wink. I think you guys already can feel it coming because we've been working really hard and things are finally happening. So <laughs> really cool things are on the way and we couldn't have done it without you sticking around and listening to me butcher segments like my greatest hits album this week. But we have fun together. So if you can this week, get to a Hardee's, share this podcast with a friend, stay off hot air balloons. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. I don't know. Watch Elvis and buy that book for for your friend that used to know. Yeah, Did he ever play not? anything? Was he ever a character in a, a show? Who? The guy that wrote that book. Um, He was in Aladdin with me. Yeah, he, he was in almost every play that I was in. Was he ever like a main character in a play? Ooh, Wait, I don't, don't know. recall. I don't know. I brought this up right now. I don't know either because I really have to pee. I'm sorry, everybody. That's it. With that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers. Oh, check out the Patreon. I don't know. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>